So Bubble have just released their table element and I'll tell you what, it's a lot more powerful than and more convenient than trying to build tables in a repeating group. Now this is their first release so it does lack a few features of which I'll talk about but I'm sure they will get to fixing those bits and pieces in no time at all. So let's jump in and have a look. All right, so here's a table, something that would have taken me significant time to build in a repeating group. But now that we've got the table element, I can just throw it in and create my layouts really, really quickly. So this particular table element has a sticky header at the top. I can scroll down and of course I can access all of the data that, that I would be able to access in a repeating group. And I can create states like so, clear those states. I can push data into pop-ups. Okay, so what do I love most about this table element? Well, I think one of the most powerful features is that you can specify the type of layout in every single column in a row. Okay, so we have a column here, we have an aligned parent. Here I can stack two pieces of text on top of each other by specifying a column. Over here I have a row. So that is something I guess you could do it by nested groups in a repeating group, but it will take you a long time and it'll be a bit of a pain, okay? The other thing I really like about this is much like a repeating group, you only need to configure this first row in terms of your dynamic data. So just like a repeating group, the current cell, this is where you configure your data and it just repeats, all right? So we can create scrolling a scrolling action and we can also let this grow as much as we like and we can create search functionality as you'd expect. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this out. So I've got a fresh page and I'm just going to walk you through the steps of building this exact UX, okay? So the table element, it now exists under containers, all right? So here we go, grab a container and just draw it in. I'm just going to put this in the center of the page for now. Page size doesn't matter at all. All right, and before I go any further, I'm just going to group this in a group. I'm going to put it into a column. And I'm just going to set the style of this column to card large. And I'm going to set a max width to 1200. All right. So in terms of this repeating group, let's just remove the fixed width, remove the min width because the container, its parent container will be controlling that and remove the min height as well. All right, so let's, let's have a look around. So first of all, it needs a data source, all right? So we know from a repeating group what that means. Let's feed in some users that I've prepared in the database. Go ahead, do a search for users, and I'm just gonna set a constraint of progress bar uh, isn't empty. Okay, so table direction vertical, you can set table direction horizontal. I don't know what would that, that would be used for. I think vertical is what we're all used to, like an Excel spreadsheet, top to bottom. Okay, like a spreadsheet, we have vertical and horizontal separators. Um, my, the UI we're building doesn't have the vertical separators like a, a spreadsheet would be. We're building just a list of rows here. So I'm going to remove the vertical separators. All right, so we just have horizontal. And I'm just gonna style this as well. So I've already set up uh, some color styles here. So I'm gonna do that on the dividers. I'm going to set a border style as well. 12 on the roundness. Okay, so in terms of height, um, the UX I demoed to you a second ago had basically a, had six rows and you can scroll within those rows with a sticky header. Like I said, you can uh, remove a fixed height as well and just have an infinitely growing list. Pagination is not yet available. I couldn't actually find the page number of that um, table element. I'm, guess, I'm guessing Bubble is gonna work on that. So we're gonna go for the basically vertical direction scroll, okay? So we need to set the number of fixed rows. Now this top row is sticky and here is the first cell. So basically what I did was I calculated a height where it would display six rows of data perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is set the, I'm gonna set a fixed height for the sticky header, all right? So this is where our titles are gonna go, our column headers. And I'm also gonna set a fixed height of 72 on the rows. Okay, 
So this is where we can specify a fixed number of rows, basically. So if we just want to show three, well, we can specify three. I actually want infinite amount of data loading, but I am, I do want on page load, I want six rows to show. All right, so if we start increasing the height of this table, table user, if I set a fixed height, and then I just start increasing it. So if I say 300, well, we can now see one, two, three rows. All right, so I just did a little calculation in that my rows are 72 and my fixed header is 44. So I did a bit of math and I discovered that if I set it to 484, well, I've now got six rows of data, perfect spacing. All right, let's get some data in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just grab some text and draw it in this first field. All right, this is going to be called, um, I'm going to say select, and this will be my body small. Actually, this is going to be a small title, that's it. All right, so what options do we have here in terms of styling? So I love the fact that you can set padding on these particular cells, all right? So I'm gonna set 24 pixels of padding either side. And then in terms of the text inside, I'm just gonna let that grow edge to edge. So I'm gonna remove the max at min and max widths, remove min height and put it in the center. So that's all we need to do for all of our titles because we've got our padding within here. So I'm just gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste. Um, this is going to say avatar. And within the cell, again, I'm going to set a left right padding. Yeah, so there's no way that you can actually set padding across this column at the moment. If I do select a column, however, I have options here. So much like a spreadsheet, if you're trying to insert a column left and right, you can do it. You can delete a column, cut a column and paste it somewhere else and all of that good stuff. Same with rows as well, okay? So if I right click here, add row above. Let's continue with this. Um, so this is going to be name. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna set the 24 and 24 of padding either side. And now I'm gonna add a few more rows to, sorry, a few more columns to the right-hand side. Copy and paste this in. This is going to be email address. And this is going to be set to, what do I have these set to rows? Okay, that's fine, Let's set to row. And 24 and 24. What I might actually do before I keep pasting text is just quickly set this all to row and just get the padding down. I wonder if I can right click. No, I can't. All right, so I just need to keep going. Still infinitely faster, guys, than a repeating group. After that, we're going to have something called status. And we're gonna have another one. This is going to be created date. And then we're gonna have one more column, add column to the right. Set up the row container layouts, 24, 24. And this will basically just say edit. All right, so that just took me a couple of minutes. And if I do preview the page, look at what we have. Column headers, perfect. Everything nicely aligned. What we will do is actually make a bit more space for this email address, but let's get some data in here. Okay, so in terms of this first box here, I'm just gonna grab a material icon because what I'm after is, um, I'm after just a little checkbox. So I'm gonna say check. I'm gonna set this to Almost it's like a gray color. Let's do, let's do the surface color. And I'm gonna say 24 by 24. Okay, now in terms of alignment, we have to, we're just gonna set up the alignment in this first infinite row here. All right, so I want it in the center. Um, and I want 24 left and right. Okay, and actually on this row itself, I'm gonna say fit width to content. No, that's a bit small. All right, um, let me think. 
Let me think here. So 24. Ah, I know what I need to do. I just need to copy and paste. Instead of select in here, I'm rather just going to have this checkbox because I want to be able to deselect stuff later. All right, so now with this checkbox in here, I'm going to select this A and just say fit with content. And it's a 24 pixels of left right padding that is creating this gap. Okay, and I'm just going to put this in the center. Down here, move this guy to the center and it will populate all the way down. Perfect. All right, what about an image? So let's grab an image, draw that in the box. This is going to be the current rows user. All right, something new, a new little expression there, exciting. That is their image. And basically I'm going to zoom in and cut a circle. So I'm going to say 48, back to this image on the layout, put it in the center. And we're going to say 48, keep aspect ratio fixed. All right, actually that looks too big. I'm going to come down, bring that down to 40. And then in the cell itself, just align it in the center. Actually, we can leave it left because let's do this. On B itself, let's also do fit width content. And then um, in these cells, we need 24 pixels of padding, which I forgot to do earlier. So all of these need 24, 24 and 24. All right, this is a bootstrap standard um, as well as a, I'd say, creative choice. Uh, we'll get to these ones later. All right, so to recap, on this particular column, it's just a checkbox. I've got 24 pixels of left right padding and therefore on the column itself, column A, I can select fit width content. So it will be fitting width to 24 either side plus the center piece, this uh, check icon. I've done the same thing with avatar. Now in terms of the name, name won't be fit width to content, but let's look at the cell, how we want to set this up. So cell 1C, I want it to be a row and I've got 24 pixels of left right padding. All right, so I can just grab text uh, and drop it in there. This is going to be the current rows users name first. Okay. And I'm going to set this to body small. And I know that all I need here is 21 pixels. Uh, no, sorry, let's have a look, see, 14. Let's do a fixed height here, um, 20, yeah. Okay, remove the fixed width in this text, remove the min width in this text, there you go. And now I'm just gonna copy and paste this, copy paste. It's gonna put it next to it for now, that's fine. It changes to name last. And now I need to order this as a column, top to bottom. So I've clicked on the cell itself, and now I'm gonna to go to the layout. And this is what I love about this column, um, this table, that in each cell we can set a line to parent, uh, fixed or row and column, and in the individual cells themselves. Put that in the center, lovely stuff. All right, email address, so what do we have? Cell 1D, I'm gonna set this to row. Okay, then I'm gonna grab some text copy, and I'm gonna paste that in. And this is the email address. Now I want a bit more breathing space for this email address to render, otherwise it's gonna wrap. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just put this in the center. And then I'm gonna click on column D. And then I'm gonna set a min width of, I don't know, let's try 180, see how we get on. Okay, in terms of the status, this is just gonna be like a little tag. So I'm gonna set this to row as well and we need 24 left right padding. And do we have that here? No, we don't. So back on cell 1D, 24 left right. Okay, back to the status, need some more text. So I'm gonna grab uh, this text here, I'm gonna paste it in. Look at this formatting, absolutely stunning. And I'm going to say current users status. All right, this is just a little tag option set. So I'm just gonna set some styling here. Um, I'm gonna say that the color is going to be green. And I'm gonna have some background style, a flat color. It's also gonna be green, but just of 10%. I'm gonna put that in the center. I'm gonna set some rounds of four. It's actually too large, so I'm gonna set 12. Yeah, that's better. And then center text vertically. And then on the layout, I'm gonna choose Fit width to content. All right, we'll look, have a look at the renderings shortly. On the create a date, copy, paste it in. Okay, we can see that this 
cell 1f does need some formatting so this will just be a row as well can be a column doesn't matter um, and we need our 24 pixels of left right so you're probably getting the hang of this now 24 pixels on the text itself remove fixed width remove min width remove min height um, and let's put it in the center all good and now we just need a little icon so i'm going to copy this icon and i'm going to paste it into this edit box now i'm looking for just sort of an edit there we go and i'm going to make it slightly darker so we can see it all right so in the cell itself okay let's set up the formatting as usual let's set it to row 24 left right put it in the center and actually for this column i am going to say fit with the content because look at that it fits absolutely perfectly all right on this little status guy here i also want some internal padding i'm just going to say four left right and maybe two top and bottom and then i think we need a bit more height here yeah all right guys let's see where we're at with this Fantastic. All right. So, yep, just a few little problems here. That's fine. Um, we just need to sort out some spacing issues here. So I know that the status is only ever going to be active and inactive. It's going to set a conditional here as well. So it changes the color if it is inactive. So if the current rows user status is inactive, then color font color will be black and background color will be black 10%. All right, so this is uh, where it becomes, yeah, really, really useful again. So let's just go back through these columns. So this particular column on the layout, I just said fit with the content and it included the internal pad. All right, um, avatar did the same because the avatar is always going to be 40 by 40. With the name, we don't know what the width needs to be with the name. So we're going to sort of let this uh, expand and contract as it needs to, but retaining 24 pixels of left right padding. Email address, we manually said we can't have a min width less than 180. And if I just have a look at this, I can see that the email address is rendering nicely, but the created date obviously isn't a created date. All right, so let's, let's just carry on through here. Anyway, we needed a min width, so I've set that 180. All right, we don't want it to wrap. Now status doesn't need that much space. So I'm gonna set a fixed width of say 80. It needs a bit more, so I'm gonna increase a little bit. Uh, why is this behaving strangely? Let me just try, um, I think that's just a small bug. Anyway, create a date. So let's go to create a date and we're gonna say current rows users creation date. And I'm just gonna format that as something a bit more friendly. So I'm going to choose custom. <clears throat> I'm gonna say day, 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 uh, month, 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 and then apostrophe YY. All right, um, and what do we have? 14, so we only need about 20 pixels of fixed height on this guy here. All right, that's better. Let's have another look. All right, so the edit guy is uh, struggling a little bit here. So on the edit, I'm gonna say min width of, let's try 24 and 24 is 48, 58, 68, 72. So min width of 72. All right, looking really, really good. So we've got, yeah, we actually have quite a lot of space here to play with. Um, so we probably could actually even add uh, another cell, something I'm not gonna do. I'm just gonna make sure that I can see um, this element. Okay, so just inside here, I'm just gonna add some text so we can format this nicely. This will say users. Going to be body large. Uh, 
I'm going to set some gap here as well. So this gap 20 and then copy paste. This will say manage your users and their data. I'm going to set that to body small and I'm going to move that up a bit. And I'm going to group these two guys, group elements in a column. All right, I'm showing you guys the typical layout. Oh, that's absolutely fine. So notice that um, spacing looks good here. As soon as I hover over this table, that's when Bubble gives me these extra options. All right, so top left is how I select the table. And the table height set to 484, just, that's just a calculation of the first static row plus six uh, static height rows as well. So I've got up to 484. Yes, I can increase it. I can say 560. Now it's added a seventh. All right. But I want six, four, eight, four. All right. And we can also specify if I select. Um, so now that I've selected this sticky row here, I do need to specify to make this row sticky. Otherwise, it won't be sticky. So I'm just going to check that. And on this row here, I can specify, I can say, you know, just show me three rows. But it's trying to fill the number of, it's trying to fill the space here. So it's going, I've set a fixed height basically of this table element, and then I've specified three rows. So it's just trying to fill up the rest of the space. All right, so I'm just going to not do that. So I get my six rows back. All right, let's have a look. All right, lovely stuff. So in this column itself, this is struggling as well. So I'm just gonna to go to the layout and set a min width of 72, just so it doesn't, um, yeah, so sorry. So if we are going to fit width to content, we still do need a min width, and now this should render nicely. All right, guys, um, and the other thing we can do is I can just throw in a, an input to do a bit of a search. Drop it in there, and I can say search. Okay, um, and let's push this. So what I want here is, I wanna change this to row and edge to edge. And then I'm gonna take these two pieces, group them in a column, and that's better. All right, so then much like a repeating group on the table user, we can just say search for users, and we can say search the name, name first, is equal to input searches value. All right, I'm just going to check ignore into constraints, otherwise it won't show anything because it will be looking for a value. All right, and let's just search Sally here. All right, so why is Sally in the center? I think because what I need to do on this row infinite is just set this to a fixed height, not a min height. All right, let's just refresh. Let's search Sally again. And there we go, there's Sally. Now, what I've noticed is when I do remove Sally and hit enter, it doesn't actually reset this. So for now, we'd have to have a workflow that we can click a button just to reset the data here. All right, what else can't we do, guys? Um, what we can't do is, well, we can get the data out of this. I showed you in the demo. I just created some states. And I also, we can push this, or we can click the whole cell, or this icon. We can push data into pop-up. Much the same as a repeating group on the data side, okay? We can get data out, we can get data in, all fine. Just showing you some limitations at the moment. So what we can't do is click on C, and by the way, I can delete it with this little icon. What we can't do is collapse the horizontal space. So Responsive is a little bit tricky um, at the moment, but we can employ the same trick that I've taught everyone else at Build Camp with Responsive, which is you just set a min width on the table or the group of 576 or 992 or 768, which means that when you are on mobile, you'll see the full table at the particular min width view, which means it's going to scroll um, left, right. Okay. So that is a bit of a limitation. I'd love the ability to, well, we can, we can conditionally say when the page width is less than 992 it's a table so we want the table um you know we want a min width of around 992 we can say when that is true then it's not visible but the only thing we can't do at the moment is on the layout say collapse the space okay and if i do figure out a hack for that i'll let you guys know 
but that is the table element guys so I hope you enjoyed that um, I'm super excited about this table element specifically again in each cell you can set the actual container layout which I absolutely love and everything just looks a lot more um, evenly spaced and beautifully rendered I think it's a fantastic leap forward for bubble